Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be doing a little tutorial, um, quite a quick video really. It's been a very busy week for me so I haven't had too much time to do many videos or, or videos at all really. Um, we, I've been doing a lot of framing for an exhibition uh, for my pictures to go into a gallery so uh, it's, it's, it's been full of framing and you see these are the pictures that I've been framing. And so we're finally getting to round to doing a little video on, on a tutorial really. So it's Thursday and the video is coming out today. So you can see how last minute this all is at the moment. So what we're going to be doing is a little, little tutorial about uh, mixing paints. Not, not, not how you mix the actual paints, it's more about how much water you, you use to mix into paints. And that's a very confusing subject for many people. It's, it's difficult for the beginner to really appreciate quantities of paint of water to use for mixing paints or, or when to uh, add the water. Do you add it to the, to the palette or do you add it to the paper? So this quick video is all about uh, how to mix the watercolour properly. So what we're going to do uh, today is to try and work out how much water you need. And the best way to describe how much water you need is re really by the use of values. And the values are, are, a, are a, um, how light and dark. So what are, we're going to do a little test or a little experiment. So what I want you to do, if, if you can follow along, is to do 10 little squares on a bit of watercolour paper. I mean, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK, we'll do 8 squares. 8 squares is enough anyway. Um, and what, what this is, this is going to be a value study. So in, in order to mix up uh, watercolour paints, what we're, we've got to work out what the aim of it is. So what, what are we trying to achieve? Uh, it's, always, it's always good to, to really have um, an aim. So when, when you aim to say, uh, to, to, when you know what to do, then you can be clear about how to get there. So what this is, is, this is going to be a range of boxes and it's going to range from light to dark. So in order to mix up those colours, we have to use the correct quantity of water. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use only two colours in this and these are going to be ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So I'm going to get a little dab of, of ultramarine blue there and a little dab of burnt umber here. So what we're going to do is work out from light to dark. So the easiest one to do is the darkest. So quite a lot of burnt umber and quite a lot of ultramarine blue. And I'm going to paint here the dark part. So you can see that is very dark. Yeah? So that's the darkest one, all worked out nice and easy. Now we want to work out the lightest one. So we're going to put some water in there and we're going to have it covering almost nothing. Do you see that? Do you see how much water I'm using? So what, what the water is for is to dilute it to the correct value. So this is going to be the, the, the lightest wash here. So I'm going to put it in and you can see it's almost covering nothing. You may not even be able to see that. I can see that with my eye, but you may not be able to see that. So what we've got is the lightest and now we've got the darkest. So now the, the use of water is in order to achieve the correct tone here. Um, it's an interesting concept, but the use of water is to mix up the correct amount of water for pigment in order to achieve the correct tone or value, how light and dark it is. So there we've got the, the eight swatches in this case. Um, so now we have to work, the next one, we have to do it a little bit darker than this wash. So I'll, I'll dip the the, pet, the water, brush into the water. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of blue and a little bit of brown. And I'm going to sort of work out how much water I need in order to get that value. So I'm going to pop that in here now. Maybe it needs a little bit more. Okay. And I'm going to place that on. Okay, so that you can see maybe that that is slightly darker than that one. So this is all controlled via the amount of water that you place onto the palette and also the amount of paint that you're picking up. 
Um, and and you're, you're trying to still make it watery. So that's, that's the second one. Now we're going to do the next study. So this is, this, this is really important to appreciate two things, really. It's how much water you place on, but also what you're trying to achieve in placing the water on, which is the correct tone, tonal value. So now we're going to do the third swatch. So we're going to pick up, let's get some more blue on there, I seem to have used that. We're going to do the third swatch now. So we're going to place it over here, get some of that. So we're going to do a sort of mid-tone, maybe that's a bit darker. So add, add a bit, have a look on the palette and see where that's a bit darker. There you go, so you can see that. And now we're going to place it on. Maybe it needs to get a little bit darker still. Okay, so you see that one there now is slightly darker than that one there. So the amount of water and the amount of pigment in the water is what's dictating um, the mix. So my aim is to get that shade in. So you must always have an aim and the aim is correct value mostly. So now we do the, the next one. Hopefully you'll do have a go at this. So I'll pick up some blue and a little bit more brown. See I think that's too, see I think that's too dark now. So I'm going to add um, to brown as well. So I'm going to add a little bit more water. So, you have this, so this is to do with water content and I'm going to mix it up to try and get the right colour for the next for the next colour swatch or the value swatch really. So you can see that's that. Right, I'm going to give that one a go now. So the correct amount of water and the correct amount of pigment and I'm going to place it down here. Maybe a bit more, a bit more pigment. Okay, now that's about right, maybe a smidgen darker. So I'm going to add a little bit more pigment to the water mix. Add that to it as well. Okay, so we've gone from very light, a bit darker, a bit darker, a bit darker. Now to the next one. So with this one now, we need, we need the same amount of water, but we need more pigment in the water. So, so we go to the blue, add some over here, go to the brown, add some here, mix them up. So that's the next shade, looks about right, maybe a little, maybe not quite right. So I think, I think that's a little bit too dark now. So I'm going to go to my water, pick it up with my brush, water, add a bit more water to the mix, a bit more blue to the mix, and hopefully that's going to give a better shade. So that's not quite right either, so I needed, so, it's the same watery, it feels the same amount of water. So now I'm going to add a bit more blue just to make it darker. Okay. So it, it's about, you can see that's darker on the swatch now. So it's going from light, darker, 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 darker. So the, trying to make it as clear as possible for you. So you're, you're always trying to keep the mixture quite wet most of the time um, and then uh, you add more pigment to that wetness. So that's, that's well, number five now. Now we're really getting into the darker phases. So, so it's the same amount of water but I'm going to add more pigment. So you can see it's still wet. See, see how it moves around? It's still wet but I've added more water to it, more, more pigment to it but it's still wet. You can see it flowing around there. I don't know where that catches you up. See? big puddle there. So it's still a wet medium. And then, and then I'm going to keep on adding until, adding pigment until I'm, I'm right. But it's still wet. So this is the next, maybe a bit more. You've got to, it's, got to, it's practice really. And then I'm going to place on and you can see that, that was darker. How about that? Right, so I'll clean my brush. Now we've got to get the next lot, the next tone in. So this, in this very liquidy mass, I'm going to add more pigment. So the ratio of pigment for the same wetness gets more. So the, the amount of pigment, the, the amount of the amount of water is still pretty much the same. So there's that. Place the last one on, and there we have it. So that was pretty good really, That's, that showed a progression, but they were all wet. 
they were all wet, none of them were dry. So it was a very similar wet flowing medium, but just a little bit more pigment added. So very light, light, darker, 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 darker. So it looks like that. So to summarize what I've done then is that I've, I've, tried, to, I've tried to keep the wetness the same for all of these pictures, uh, little swatches, but what's changed is the amount of pigment that's gone into the wetness. So you, you, could, you could almost um, have any wetness, any degree of, of, of water content, as long as the pigment matches the, the correct um, uh, amount of value that's going on the paper. I don't know whether I explained that right, but it's, it's, it's a question of just proportions. But overall, you can keep it very, very wet if you want to. So there, there are other ways of, of using water, and this is uh, the dry brush, brush technique really, where you're just using um, a little bit of water. So if I grab a bit of um, blue there um, and keep, keep, it, keep it quite dry, so that's, that's a, dry meth, a dry paint, and then you can sort of move, move it along here like that. So that's more of a dry brush technique. So you can see that uh, there are holes in the, in the painting and it, it's, it's been dragged across. So that would be another different type of mix and so that would be um, more pigment and less water for that process um, and then what, what I'll do just to give you an idea of what the difference is so now we've got just ultramarine blue here so I'll put a lot of water in there see it's really flooded with water and then I'll do that and that's the different effects so water content is not a consistent thing it's, it's not how much you, when, when I, it's one of the most common questions I get asked, how much water should I use? But there's no real answer to it. It depends on what you're painting. It depends on what effects you're looking for. So if you're looking for a dry brush technique, then there's little water. And if you're looking for a wet technique, then it's a lot of water. So it depends on what style really you're, you're looking to do. And the, the style is dependent on how you're going to paint, i.e. the end result. I'm looking at how I want the painting to look. And the, the amount of water will be determined by how I want my painting to look. I thought I'd talk a little bit more about my procedure and how I organize the water, uh, particularly when I'm in the studio. It's slightly different when I'm outdoors. And this is the to have two containers really. One is for dirty water and one is for clean water. So after a while with uh, painting watercolour, when I mean, you've done a lot of mixes on the palette, this container here becomes absolutely filthy. It becomes really dirty. And if, if you just kept it like that and kept on painting from that water, there tends to be a sort of dullness that comes over the painting. It becomes greyer and you can lose the clean mixes which you don't really want to do. So what I do is that, let, let's, let's say there's, there's the paint. I, I wash it there, make sure it's all off. There's cat, sometimes there'll be a lot of paint on there. And then I've got a clean bit of water at the end of my brush uh, with the second mix. And when, when you do, when you, when you do a, a mix, you want to take clean water with you. You don't want to, to have dirty water. So there's, there's, a, there's some paint I've just put on there. So I'd clean it off clean it off, and then I can start to mix the colours on the palette, but with clean brushes. So that's a really important part, I find, just to, just to control the, the way that um, uh, you, you can apply clean water. So the next part, really, is you, let's say you've, you've picked up some water and there's a lot of water there, and you think, well, how do, I, how do I get rid of that water? And what I do is I use a little pad, a, a tea towel, and I can dab that on, the, on my tea towel and control it pr pretty precisely, really, how, how much water is on the brush. And then I can, uh, then I can sort of control it. See, so there's only a small amount there. So if I'm doing a little detailed area, sometimes you don't want, want too much water for detailed areas um, because it is, you want to be very precise and just put a tiny bit on. So if that was flooded with water, then it, you can't really be precise. And that goes back again to um, what you're trying to achieve in the painting. So if, if I'm trying to do broad washes, then there's going to be lots of water there. I'm going to be using so much water. But when I come to a more detailed section, I'm only going to be using tiny quantities of it. So, so you might want to use less water with that. 
and, and then place it down more con in a more controlled way. So again, it, it, how much water? That's a, such a tricky question. It really depends on what you're trying to do. The painting and what your the style of your painting will control the amount of water or, or will dictate the amount of water that you'll use. Again, I can't emphasize enough, there is no one way of saying this is the amount of water that you need. Um, it, it is a variable. What I do outdoors when I to, to control the water is I, I don't really use a rag like that. What I can do out, outdoors is, I've, let's say I've got a lot of water there, what I do is I flick it, I flick it, and you, I don't know whether you noticed it, whether the camera picked it up, the, the, water, the water comes off. And that's how I control how much water I use when I'm plan air painting. Um, because you don't really want to take a rag with you, it's just another thing to take. And so I, I like flicking the water. I particularly like it when Tanya's there, so I can flick it on her. <laughs> or the car there, or something like that, that makes me laugh. Um, she sometimes complains that it's going over her clothes, but <laughs> never mind. Uh, so anyway, that's another way of controlling, by flicking it off. Um, so that's almost it really. Just to make, make sure you realise that there's not much you, the, the, the amount of water is dictated by your painting and not the other way around. One other mistake that people use as well, um, if, we go, if we go back to the painting, is that let, let's say you, you've got some, um, um, uh, you, you've done some painting here and, and they say, well, it's a bit dark. What some people do is they say, right, it's a bit dark. I'm going to dip in and I'm going to add more water. And sometimes that can, that can work and it can be, a, it's, it's sort of a last minute sort of re, uh, resolution or restoration of it. But my advice is don't really go that way too much. It's better to mix it correctly on the palette, the correct water content, and then place it on. You do sometimes have to adjust it, but it's better to go from there correctly to the palette rather than keep on adding to it. Hopefully you enjoyed that and got something from it. And uh, I think that these little swatches are so worth having a go at and they will teach you so much about water content and pigment content. And learning really to understand that these values are what's important. And those will, that will teach you how to mix colors in the correct way and the quantities of water versus pigment. So let me know how that goes. I'd love to hear how your, how your experimentation goes. And watercolor is about experimenting really. And it's about having a go at things and studying the results of what you do. So this will be a, a wonderful little test for you. And to, to keep in mind always that that's the most important thing. There is no set amount of water to put on a painting. And it, it is the painting that dictates the amount of water. And that's a variable, that, that will always change depending on your style. So there we have that, and I hope you enjoyed that. And um, let me know how it goes, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much, bye-bye.